I don't want you to be nervous if you've never been on TV before. Uh, <laughs> these are just cameras. These people all like you. Um, lawyers don't normally do talk shows. I'm not your normal lawyer, I guess. Well, you don't have the normal case. That's correct. Is, you've been on CNN. We did a count uh, something like 60 times That's so it? far. 60 times so far. Um, what, what, is, what is that? Is that part of the strategy of the case to constantly be on camera, constantly be on this show or other shows to keep the pressure on the president? Well, Stephen, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, this is not your normal case, and it's not your normal defendant. I mean, you're dealing with a defendant that's very undisciplined, can be easily baited into making mistakes, and I think we've been very, very successful in doing just that, and we're going to keep doing what we're doing. But you're using the media. I mean, people are, people are fascinated in, in, in your client. Um, certainly, CNN also is fascinated with your client. They always have a good, you know, over-the-shoulder shot of her under the shoulder. And <laughs> when you guys are talking, are you trying to out-Trump Trump by using the media? And if so, won't that be a Pyrrhic victory? You will have won. But at what cost, Michael Avenatti? <laughs> at what cost? Well, look, I mean, we're going to continue to use the media. I think we've used it with great success. And I've said that this entire process is all about results. Um, and that's what we're ultimately interested in. And I'm confident that we're going to win the case. And I'm, I'm going to stand by what I've said recently, which is I think the president will not serve out his term. Tough, I, tough, tough never, crowd. This is a very tough I have, crowd. I have never seen anyone pander to an audience like you just Thank did. You. How Thank dare you. you, sir? What is the perp? What is the? No, <laughs> we don't have time. We don't have time. This isn't CNN. I, I, thought, I keep things to pace. I thought now, that was a. I thought that was a challenge. No. Okay. Uh, what's the purpose of the case? Originally, what was the purpose? You, I believe, you said that the public has a right to know the truth and and to decide the truth. Why do we have a right to know this? Let's say, in a fantasy world of your creation, that it's possible the president is occasionally not faithful to his wife. If that were true, which I don't for a minute believe, <laughs> why would we have the right to know that? Well, it's not about the sex, and it's not about people's right to know what happened as it relates to the intimate relationship, Stephen. At this point, it's about the public's right to know about the cover-up and the lies and the deceit that has occurred relating to this $130,000 payment and what the president knew and when he knew it and what he lied about. That's what this is about. Okay. Okay. You've got a new piece of evidence for us tonight. Um, before we... Uh, this, is, this is a copy Correct. of the thing. We'll show it to the audience in just a second. Describe what you're about to reveal to America for the very first time. This is an exclusive... No, no one has heard about this before. That's correct. Okay. This... Oh, but before we do that, <laughs> before we release any new information about the Stormy Daniels case, we always have to make sure we're doing a Stormy Watch. Legally, I have to do that, okay? <laughs> you're, you're now sworn in to Stormy Watch, okay? Nicely, right. nicely done. Thank you. So, what, is, what do I hold in my hand, Counselor? This is a uh, copy of the incoming wire receipt from uh, Ms. Daniel's prior counsel showing the origin of the $130,000 coming from uh, essential consultants. Okay, here we go. So you got a blow up of it right here because we're in the we're in the courtroom. All right, perfect. Walk us through what you've shown us here. Sure. This is the $130,000 receipt coming from uh, the entity Essential Consultants, which is the entity that Michael Cohen uh, created, fabricated for the purposes of this payment, um, and it, it's actually coming from First Republic Bank in San Francisco as opposed to their New York branch. And there's that's an important piece of evidence, uh, Stephen, for the following reason. There's a certain attorney general uh, in the state of California. Yeah. Uh, you may have heard his name. His name's uh, Xavier Becerra. He's not a big fan of the president. Uh, and this document may, in fact, give him jurisdiction over certain criminal acts associated with this payment. And, in fact, if the attorney general of the state of California were to bring charges, President Trump could not pardon Michael Cohen for those charges. So, that 
takes away. That could right take there. away. That could take away his get out of jail free card, right Abs there. Absolutely. Do you think that the president is doing these pardons, like the pardon of Joe Arpaio and Scooter Libby, and floating the Jack Johnson pardon to send a message to the people who are in hot water with the the federales, like just hold tight, Daddy's got you. Is that? Is that? Do you think that's why he's doing it? I think there's no question that he's doing it, but I think it's a false promise. You don't think he would follow through with it? Why not? Well, I think he may follow through with it, but it's not going to protect Michael Cohen from various state charges in New York or California. Have you met Michael Cohen? Yes, we met at a, at a restaurant, actually. Was it a nice restaurant? It, it, <laughs> it, it, was a, it was a nice restaurant, but it was a very awkward meeting. Uh, Michael Cohen used to have a guy to come on uh, the TV on the Anderson Cooper Power Hour with you, and he would yell at you on behalf of Michael Cohen, saying, you know nothing about Michael Cohen. He's a great man. You're a terrible man. This right. won't go anywhere. What happened to that guy? Well, actually, if anyone has seen him, please let us know, because he cannot be found, and we're looking on the back of every milk carton for him right now. <laughs> that guy just disappeared. Hey, I don't know what happened Because no one's him. defending we, Michael Cohen we, anymore? We can't find him. It, it probably was right around the time that the FBI raided Michael Cohen's home that he disappeared. I don't know. Do, 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 do you think that um, the president is throwing Michael Cohen under the bus? Because we recently just saw a headline from the National Enquirer, and uh, Mr. Pecker, who owns, his name is Mr. Pecker, who owns the National Enquirer, <laughs> is a good friend of Trump's. Do you think that he, Trump's using the National Enquirer to get at Cohen? But there's no question that they've already started the character assassination now on, on Michael Cohen, because it's clear to them that he's going to flip on the president. And... They're nervous about what he might say, so they want to undercut his credibility. Now, you said just a little while ago, and you said on CNN um, last week, you said you think Trump will resign, that he, he won't last out his term. W what makes you think he'll resign? He is nothing if not shameless. So what, what is it that would make uh, him step down? He'll fight tooth and nail to the end. Well, Stephen, here's the problem. You have the personal attorney to the president of 12 to 15 years who is going to face serious, serious charges. The FBI seized uh, 16 cell phones when they conducted those raids, an enormous amount of information. That attorney knows where all kinds of bodies are buried. There's no question about that. And I don't think the president is going to be able to withstand the heat at the end of the day. I just don't. Well, um, you said also that you have been approached uh, by other women who you cannot name presently who also have NDAs with the president, who were paid off by the president or intermediaries. Um, how, can you tell me how many, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna hold up my fingers. You tell me <laughs> when how many women have approached you or how many women you believe potentially could approach you, okay? How long, how long is this show? I don't, I forgot. <laughs> I don't, I don't. You're gonna be a very busy man. Thank you. Michael Avenatti, everybody. We'll be right back with David Chang. <laughs>